Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. As you can see, we are under the weather. You notice? <laughs> yeah man, the voice. We are under the weather. So, bear with us. This is our third video for today. Once again, a happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers. Also, Today, May 12, is International Nurses' Day. This day provides us with an opportunity to recognize, celebrate, and acknowledge all nurses for all they do all year round. All nurses. Big up on yourself. And talking about nurses, you might have listened to the interview I did with the female this morning. I was telling her that she should go to the Cornwall Regional Hospital to see a psychiatrist. Well, a nurse has reached out to me. There is her message on your screen. She started off by saying, Wonder if we could get the name and address of that lady so the mental health team can see her. Well, her phone number was passed on. The nurse continued, Mental health patient don't have to go to the Cornwall Regional Hospital to be seen. In every parish, you have mental health services at the health centers type 2 to 5. Initial diagnosis is made when taken to the a &E department. The psychiatric nurses run the clinics. Then, after clinic, they go on the road to different homes in their special bus. Psychiatrists come to the parish on a monthly basis you also have psychiatric nurse practitioner different from the nurses that are just registered mental health nurses you may also see that in a and e and medical floor they have some persons that wear gray top for male or gray uniform they are psychiatric aides that are trained and employed to work only with those persons so, if you didn't know, you know now. And you nurse, thanks again for all the information you have been giving me since I started this channel. Enough respect. In the news today, detectives at CTAC, that's the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, they have arrested and charged a 56-year-old tour operator named Garth White. He is living at Balmoros Heights in the Toile area of St. Mary. Garth White, he has been charged for uttering forged document, conspiracy to defraud, and attempt to obtain forged document. The allegations are that in 2021, Garth's aunt, she died. Her name is Miss Eileen Simmons. It is said that Garth, he had a meeting with Two of his aunt's family members and he was uttering what was said to be her last will and testament. During the time Garth was reading the will, it is said that one of Miss Simmons' daughters, she realized that the signature on the document was not that of her mother. It was forged. As a result, a report was made to the police. The will was submitted to the forensic examiner who found that, yes, the will was forged. As a result, Garth White, he was arrested and charged, and he'll be going to the courts shortly. This next incident, it took place yesterday afternoon. Saturday, May 11, between minutes after 4 o'clock and minutes after 7 o'clock. It took place at Colbeck Castle Heritage Site at Old Arbor in the parish of St. Catherine. We are learning that a group of persons, they were having recreational activities at the site when they were pounced on by three hoodlums. Two of them were armed with guns. 
The hoodlums, they held up the four persons and held them hostage for a while. They also robbed them. A police detective sergeant stationed in Kingston. He was robbed of his Glock 17 9mm pistol containing 17 9mm rounds. His Samsung Galaxy S Ultra and one rose gold iPhone 11 Max Pro cellular phone. A 21-year-old clerk employed to the electoral office of Jamaica. He was robbed of his rose gold iPhone 7 Plus cell phone, one black Galaxy A70 cell phone, and one black digital waterproof watch. A 27-year-old female, she's employed to the National Housing Trust. She was robbed of her light blue iPhone 13 Pro, one Apple Watch Series 9, 7,000 Jamaican dollars in cash and her Scotiabank debit card. A 30-year-old project manager employed to the Ministry of Education. He was robbed of his black Samsung Galaxy S2 cell phone. One blue Samsung S10 light cellular phone and 4,000 Jamaican dollars in cash. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape in the policeman's Nissan Tida motor car. <laughs> All four persons, they were held hostage by these hoodlums for over three hours. Can you just imagine how this affected them mentally? <laughs> Boy, may I tell you. Now, this next incident, it took place yesterday afternoon. Saturday, May 11, at a river at Latry Hall in the Amity Hall Police area in the parish of St. James. We are told that members of a family and some friends, they went to a river in the area when a youngster, his name is Demoy Lawrence. Next month on June 15, Demoy, he will be celebrating his 16th birthday and he lived at Canaan in the Dumfries area of St. James. It is said that Demoy, he got into difficulties and drowned before help could reach him. He was removed from the river by friends and family members. Sad indeed. In yesterday's video, I had promised to update this story. It took place early yesterday morning. Saturday, May 11, about 2.30. It took place at Haddo District in the Withan Police Area in the parish of Westmoreland. That man on your screen. His name is Patrick Maduri, but he was popularly known as Brep. Brep, he was a hard working 57 year old Mason living at Grand Clean in the Haddo area of Westmoreland. What we are learning is that Brep, he was at a wakeyard in the area. He left the wakeyard and he was walking home. He was walking along the Hadomian Road when he saw some hoodlums breaking into a shop. We are told that Brep, he called out to the hoodlums and one of them opened gunfire at him, hitting him to his head, his neck, his shoulder and the right side of his abdomen. Brep, he fell to the ground and the hoodlums, they ran away making good their escape. From all indication, Brep, he died on this spot. The police, they were called in and when they processed this crime scene, six 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, there are some mayhem taking place in the Truro and Towned areas of Westmoreland. It all started close to 12 midnight on Friday, April 12th. That man on your screen. His name is Sheldon Shakes. 
Sheldon, he was a peacemaker. He was shot and killed after he was trying to make peace. The bullet that he got was fired by a hoodlum, popularly known as Tommy. And that bullet was intended for another guy who Tommy was in a conflict with. Since then, persons have been taking revenge in the name of Peacemaker Sheldon. They have burnt down two houses in the area. On Friday night, May 3, they shot and killed that guy on your screen. His name is Leon Anglin, but he was popularly known as Rusty R. Chin. Word on the street is that Chin, he was a close friend to Tommy who shot and killed Sheldon. Last night, there was more revenge in the name of Sheldon, the peacemaker. Last night, Saturday, May 11, about 9 o'clock. That man on your screen, his name is Damian Powell, but he was popularly known as Dunkin'. He was a 44-year-old auto mechanic and he lived at Burn Savannah in the parish of Westmoreland. That man on your screen, his name is Colin Daly, but he was also known as Reds or Birdie. He was a 42-year-old businessman also living at Burn Savannah, Dunkinney, and Reds, they are brothers. Both of them and other persons, they were playing domino at a shop along the Burn Savannah main road when a motorcycle with two hoodlums aboard rode up and stopped. The hoodlums and the bike, they opened gunfire at the men who were playing dominoes. The men ran off in different directions. The hoodlums, they then rode away on the bike, making good their escape. When the smoke was clear, both brothers, Dunkinney and Reds, they were seen lying on the ground, suffering from gunshot wounds to their upper bodies. They both died on the spot. A 61-year-old man received gunshot wounds to his right leg. He was rushed to a Nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, 30, 3, 0, 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend. About Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Murder, don't you be a bit me here, them a murder 